If you're looking for cute and unique illustrated stationery by a fun and whimsical artist, check out Jelly Pan Illustrates on Etsy.com. That's Jelly, J-E-L-L-I, and all one word, Jelly Pan Illustrates on Etsy. On Jelly Pan Illustrates, you will find the adorable character, the Soggy Star, and he's on notebooks of all different colors. Start a journal or use at school. These notebooks have style and personality. They make great gifts, too. Jelly Pan Illustrates, that's all one word, J E L L I on Etsy. Share the shop on all of your social media so your friends can order their stationery too. Jelly Pan Illustrates. It's all one word on Etsy.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Welcome back, each and every one of you. Well, um, Katanji Brown-Jackson is now Supreme Court mm-hmm. Justice Katanji. Brown Jackson, they just voted. She's confirmed. 5347. You know, I gotta tell you, this really shows you that the, the state that this country is in right now is in such moral mm-hmm. decline. You know, and the the only reason she made it to the Supreme Court is because she is related to Paul Ryan and she's part of that club. I know people will say other reasons. But I did not know until she was nominated to the Supreme Court that she was related to Paul Ryan through mm-hmm. marriage. But he's backed her career um, for many, many years and got her on the federal bench in the first place. And we're in moral decline because of the background with her rulings. This has nothing to do, you know, those who oppose her being on the court, it has nothing to do with her being liberal, a minority. A woman, nothing. It all has to do with the sentences that she Mm -hmm. gave, which were incredibly light to child pornographers that came up before her on the federal bench. That's it. And she's part of that deep state political establishment. And she has a license to spend the rest of her life doing whatever she wants to do, even if she didn't get on the Supreme Court because she's in that club. And, you know, when when Biden nominated or when there was an opening on the Supreme Court, we knew he was going to nominate a liberal person. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we just accepted. We knew he you know, it's that's how it works. You know, they presidents nominate people to be justices of the Supreme Court. Now, their first nominee does not always make it. There are people that are discussed, sometimes nominated. They don't get through the process because something comes up. But we, you know, we knew he was going to get a liberal w- woman on the, on the court. That's a given. But these sentences she gave, you know, the one guy that was in possession of child pornography, she gave three months to. And she, it wasn't just one case. If it was one case, you could say, you know, okay, maybe, you know, and she could explain it and say, well, yeah, but there were some circumstances where I really didn't think he was guilty or something, right. but I, but he was found guilty. I had to do It wasn't that it seemed like every time she had one of these weirdo guys come before her for sentencing, she would give them the lightest sentence that she was allowed to by law. They were convicted uh, and and there are minimum sentences. She went below the federal guidelines and recommendations every single time. She's got a problem. I agree. I'd like to know if she was light on other criminals as well or was it just – this particular well, this group, one, Kathy, was she was she easy on all criminals? Well, I I I don't know, but see this. I mean, that's bad too. This I'm is the saying. thing about the sex the sex offenders. There are not m- many taboos left no, in, in American society. In fact, I think the only taboo, a taboo, okay, which is hardcore stuff. The only taboo we really have left in American society, and this is not necessarily something to celebrate. This should be maybe you know taboos are not necessarily a bad thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the last taboo in American society is the is the kitty pornography stuff, right? And so, I mean, that's like the worst of the worst. Well, and child and, molestation, well, they, everything under in, that umbrella. It fits in the same thing. Yeah, it's all in the exactly. same, what do they call it, the same wheelhouse of sickness. And yeah. this one in particular is a strange thing with her because, remember, when Katanji was in law school at Harvard, she wrote an article in the Harvard Law Review that was published 
Mm-hmm. And she said then, in the in, this was when she was in law school, that the American justice system discriminates mm-hmm. against sex offenders, and that's a, that's the umbrella of all sex offenders. I mean, and then should, we have these. Shouldn't these, they be uh, discriminated citizens. against? I mean, I would think if anybody should be discriminated against, yeah. it should be sex offenders. Yeah. I mean, they shouldn't even be living in society. As far as I'm That's concerned, right. they should be locked up forever because people like that never change. I mean, from just from what I've read and seen and, 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 you know, they're repeat offenders. It's like a sickness. They, they all have. reoffend. And they I, all reoffend. Yeah. I don't think they should even be living in society. I mean, go send them off to some island somewhere and they yeah. can live with each other and, yeah. and do whatever they want. But they shouldn't be living among society with children working at Disney or wherever the hell they go. Um, so yeah. I think they should be discriminated against heavily. So I don't know where that thinking comes from. That's right. I'd really like to know. look. She seems like a nice lady. Um, you know, she obviously has a lot of friends in Washington. And of course, Paul Ryan is going to help her because it helps him. All these people elevate their family members, their friends. Like you say, it's incestuous. Hollywood works the same way. They hire their friends. They bring in people they know. They the, A lot of people that are actors, their parents are very connected or extremely wealthy. They buy their way in. This is how it is, okay? Yeah. It's very rare that somebody, just an, a total outsider, comes along. And when they do, look how they get treated. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, she she has is married into the swamp. Her family, she's blue blood, old money. Um, and good for her, you know, like I said, my only issue with her, obviously he's going to appoint a liberal and the court is still swayed, you know, heavily more on our side for now. Thank goodness. But I agree with you. The whole issue with her being very lenient with sex offenders in every instance is problematic. And I don't understand how the left can defend it. And I don't understand how they get angry at us for attacking her for it. And they, they sound really, really bad. And I hope every parent in this country and this won't be the case, but I hope every parent in this country looks at this and realizes where the left is really coming from. That's all I'm going to yeah, say. And even, and even Mitch McConnell, he's, Mitch McConnell voted no to not confirm, but he said that he was voting no on confirmation because she would, she would not come out against packing the Supreme Court. He wasn't even talking about these weird rulings. Well, you, you know, know she, plus they, 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 no, they know ahead of time how it's going to go. They know the way it's going to no, go. No, I, don't I think, think so. they decide no, behind closed doors. Not this time, Kathy. Who's going to vote? Yes. No, who's going no, to vote? No. Not this so time. he can come out and say normally, yeah. Not he can on come this out one, and no. say I'm voting no, this, so he doesn't upset his no, no, no. base or no, no. whatever his voters. No, this stuff with her on these rulings, on these weird rulings with the with the kitty pornographers, that came out and became very public during these hearings. I know she'd gone through confirmation before. People did not know about that before. Mm-hmm. So the, I am in. I am really in shock. You know, I um, I've seen other people get withdrawn from from all kinds of appointments by presidents. There was, um, there was. Uh, I want to. I think her name was Harriet Myers. It's been a long time. G. W. Bush was going to appoint Harriet Myers to the Supreme Court, and he came out and announced he was going to appoint her. Mm. And she was an attorney; she worked for him. She might have been. been this has been a long time, guys. So you know, this is just off the top of my head. Um, but she had never been a judge. But that's not a requirement. But she was an attorney, and boom, he he. W- there was controversy because she had never been a judge, so he would do it. That was it. He not pick someone else. Um, Bork, uh, picked by Reagan, didn't make it to the court. I've seen. I remember Bill Clinton. Um, when he was picking his cabinet, when he was a picking, when he, when Bill Clinton was choosing his first attorney general was, you know, Janet Reno, you guys know Janet Reno. She was not his first pick. Um, she was either the second or the third. It, it, it's the, Hey, listen, Bill, Clinton, we're talking about 1993, four guys, long time, but um, they had hearings. They had hearings for the attorney general nominee for Bill Clinton. And it had turned out that she did not pay taxes on a, on a nanny. I remember another mm. president, nominated someone for a cabinet position and they got withdrawn because they were paying a lawn guy under the table without paying taxes on. Now I obviously got to pay taxes on everything and I get that, but these seem like minor things compared to what Katanji did, but Katanji got on the Supreme court. A lot of people will say she got through the, and that you're going to hear a lot of this talk today and tomorrow and this week, because a lot of people are going to be very outraged. Like we are that this, this person with this sickness that she has with these, pornographers, child pornographers, where she gave them these incredibly insane life sentences, a lot of people will say 
well, she only got confirmed because she's African-American woman. That is not the case. You don't think that's That's part of it? No, that's not the case. Um, Joe Biden said he was going to nominate a black woman. So Mm -hmm. that's everybody, everyone knew this, that there would would be a black female replacing Breyer on the Supreme Court. The opposition to her had nothing to do with her being black, a woman, or a liberal. It was really solely around the light sentences she gave to these kitty pornographers. That is it. But she is on the court for one reason and one reason only, not because because she's black or a woman. It's because she is part of the political establishment being related to Paul Ryan. And, you know, and this is an, a fascinating thing. She's related to Paul Ryan through marriage, so it's a little distant. But he's been very active in her life, mm-hmm. got her through Washington. She's married to this Boston blue blood man, and she's very, very connected. In fact, um, and her children are direct descendants of uh, a member because her, through her husband. She has, she has a couple of children with her husband. Her husband is a descendant of a member of the original Continental Congress. That's the Congress where they signed the Declaration of Independence. Do you know who, um, which and, one it is? Uh, I, it was, it's not a famous one, but okay. I, I can't remember the name I'm talking about. And they got another Supreme Court justice in that so that's family a really as old well. Family. That's yeah, a really old so that's the, it, it. It really shows you mm-hmm. how the how the political establishment. This is their country, and we're just living in it, right? Yeah. That's well, how that's they how are. It feels. Yeah. That's how it is. I want to play a clip here. This is the the great and wonderful Marjorie Taylor Greene a couple of days ago, and I think it's. I think it needs to be played because this was – now, she's in the House. She doesn't get the vote you know, on the confirmation mm-hmm. in the Senate. But she was talking about senators like Mitt Romney and uh, others who voted to confirm Katanji. Listen to this. This is Marjorie Taylor Greene earlier this week. Point, though, where the Democrats are the party of pedophiles. The Democrats are the party of princess predators from Disney. The Democrats are the party – of, of teachers, uh, elementary school teachers trying to trying to transition their elementary school age children and convince them they're a different gender. This is the party of, of their identity, and their identity is the most disgusting, evil, horrible things happening in our country. And that's why we have to say it. We have to be willing to say it, and no matter how many uh, little blue check marks get their feelings hurt on Twitter. So, you know, it's worth okay. You know, so I want you to think about this. With what we know about Katanji Brown, right, mm-hmm. Jackson, with, with that paper she wrote for the Harvard Law Review. You know, writing for the Harvard Law Review isn't like writing for, like, your, your college newspaper or something. This is the Harvard Law Review. It's like a, being a publisher. It's a big deal where she said the American system of justice discriminates against sex offenders, okay? Just on that alone, just if that's all, there, there's more. But if it was just that, forgetting about these sentences, Katanji Brown applies to be – a school teacher at the local elementary school, and they find out about this paper she wrote about the justice system dis- discriminating and being unfair to sex offenders, would she be hired to be a kindergarten or elementary school teacher? These days, probably. No, come on. No, really. You wouldn't depends want her to be. Depends on where she, California, yes. Maybe it's some wackadoo place. No, but. <laughs> depends that really would be, on the district. That would be a disqualifier. You know, this all this business going on with Disney. If someone was. Uh, applying for a job mm-hmm. at Walt Disney World to work in the theme park, and something like this came out, would you want them working at Walt Disney World in the theme park on rides with kids? You wouldn't, would you? No, I would use the example of instead, instead, of, about saying, the politics a instead bit. of saying a paper, what if somebody applied for a job at a school or Disney and they put something on Facebook or on social That's media right. defending – child pornographers or or, or or children, kitty predators. I would hope that that would definitely be a yeah. disqualifier for them to have any kind of a job, not, let alone around children. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm curious to know if she's light on all criminals or if this is a special subset that it she's like particularly it's, it, has it an affinity It seems like to. a specialty, a subset, Kathy, because I, I didn't hear any examples from other ones. Now, uh, we got exciting news on the on the program this week. And, you know, the Brian Craig Show podcast, Kathy and I have been hosting this podcast together for the last 10 years, mm-hmm. right? And sept- September 12th is the actual 10th anniversary of this podcast. And as Incredible. of- Yeah. As of this week, the Brian Craig Show podcast is available on every 
podcast platform there is. Now, if a new one pops up tomorrow, you know, we'll be on that one too, okay? We're on all podcast platforms, including Spotify as of this week, and a brand new one. This is amazing to me. The Brian Craig Show podcast is available on all pod- on all podcast platforms, including Spotify and, get this one, Audible. I didn't even know Audible had podcasts. Well, they don't have that many. It's a special that's, thing. That's awesome. It's a special thing. We're, we're exclusive. Yes. So, so tell your friends. Yeah, so we are on Audible as well. And, uh, you know, the great success that this program has had is because of you out there and this listening audience and our Patreon supporters and everyone else that's been with us during this program. And I know a lot of you, um, some of you guys have kind of grown up with me because you've been with me since I started on the radio when I was like 19, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you guys have stuck with me all these years and uh, given us this great success that we're enjoying. Now, I was checking on Spotify. I think it has all of our past Mm -hmm. podcasts from the beginning. Is that correct? Everyone we've uploaded Um, or how far back does it go? Do you know? I think... I'll have to check, but there's at least 100, our most recent 100 oh, episodes. Great. So you can, an Audible, you can be in your car, listen, catch yeah. up, listen to older podcasts. That's and, right. So yeah. make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever plat, uh, platform you listen to podcasts on, but we're on all of them. And the Audible and Spotify are great too. And uh, I just found out about Audible this morning, actually. I That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, I just got the word this morning. All right, listen, we're going to take a break. My name's Brian Craig. Always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Do you want to become the best version of yourself? The FNR Wellbeing Portable Pilates Bar Kit can get you where you want to be. It has everything you need to sculpt your body just the way you want. It features resistance bands, a toning bar with a comfortable and durable design that will help you train your body efficiently, safely, and securely. It's great for adding fun twists to your yoga, Pilates, or stretching routine. And it comes with everything you need. This is the perfect setup to work out at home. It makes a great gift, too. Find the FNR our well-being portable Pilates bar kit on Amazon. Just go to Amazon.com and search FNR Wellbeing. That's FNR Wellbeing on Amazon.com and order your FNR Wellbeing portable Pilates bar kit right now. There's no doubt about it. Money makes the world go round. There's a lot to know and a lot of information out there. But there's one podcast that covers all the topics involving finance. The Wealth and Freedom Podcast. Their mission is to educate and empower everyone to create a path for financial independence. The Wealth and Freedom Podcast covers all the financial topics you can imagine. They have interviews with leading experts on asset protection, passive income, real estate investing, precious metals, turnkey companies, cryptocurrencies, foreign residents, and passports, and that's just the beginning. They cover much, much more than that. The Wealth and Freedom Podcast has it all. Find them on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, or at WealthandFreedomNexus.com. Do you love sports in America? Then you will want to add Patriot Sports Radio to your playlist right now. Patriot Sports Radio is a grassroots podcast network celebrating America's common ground of sports fandom. Eric, John, Chris, and the coach all bring their unique points of view to the table where everything from the upcoming games to current events can come into play. They are 100% America first and post two episodes a week on Mondays and Thursdays. Listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, and your favorite podcast app. They also have radio swag and are on Instagram, too. Find all their links on Linktree. Just go to Linktree and search Patriot Sports. Add Patriot Sports Radio to your playlist right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. So, um, Brian Stelter was speaking at a panel at the University of Chicago's Institute of Politics, and it was a panel discussion for, I don't know, liberal hacks on stage, taking questions from students. And I I think it was a college freshman who's obviously a MAGA guy, Mm -hmm. uh, brought something up and asked some questions of Brian Stelter and humiliated him. We're going to play the exchange in just a minute. But, you know, this is an interesting thing here, okay? 
about MAGA, about conservatives. If, have you noticed how many college-age kids, not necessarily in college, it just being college-age kids are like MAGA? I think a lot. Yeah. I think, I think yeah. because, and, and my dad has talked to me about this, he said the only good thing that's going to come out of this is this radicalization of the left is there's going to be a massive reaction and this, the younger kids will hear their parents complaining. They'll see their parents struggling. It's kind of like, you know, we grew up with Carter and I remember my mom waiting in line for gas for hours and being able to get five bucks. And I remember her complaining about how horrible he is and this and that. I grew up knowing that in my mind. And that really helped shape me into a conservative was, was seeing how bad he was. Even when I was 10 years old, I could see how it affected my family. And I think younger kids, the next generation are seeing this transgender stuff, this inflation, this gas short problems, all these problems and how bad Biden is. And they will see their parents complaining because that's what's that's what's real. That's what's really happening. Not what the news is telling you. Believe me, nobody's happy with this guy. And they're going to come out of those homes. And I think there is going to be a huge surge of younger conservative well, a lot people, of it, a more lot, than people realize. A lot of it is, okay, there's always been like these college Republicans. Yeah. They were always geeky white guys with no girlfriends, and they would walk around dressed like Thurston Howe III, like with an ascot and a blue blazer. Like Alex P. Keaton. Yeah, exa- Alex P. Keaton and Family yeah, Ties, exa- exactly. Yeah, and I typical bet Reagan. Was a, I bet if you went back and watched Family Ties, I bet he was a, uh, that Michael J. Fox's character on Family Ties was probably a homophobic racist. If you went back to those episodes, I'm just guessing. I was just a kid back then. I don't remember. But anyway, Donald Trump, there's a couple things. Donald Trump has has made politics and news cool since he came down the escalator. Mm-hmm. And because yeah. news – see, when we were kids growing up in the 70s and 80s, news was stuffy and boring. That's for sure. And it's and news has become I, – I did not coin this. A lot of people call it this – infotainment. Yeah. So because it's infotainment now, information and entertainment combined – you know, we got liberals out there. Uh, infotainment, a lot of younger people – Follow the news that didn't back when we were that age because of it. So True. let me play this. So this and is, the politicians have become yeah, more entertaining. So this is um, and the news people. Too. Well, this clip with Stelter is certainly entertaining. So this is at the University of Chicago. It's this panel Brian Stelter is a part of, and a college freshman just starts talking to Brian Stelter mm-hmm. and just just humiliates Brian Stelter. And uh, we'll play the whole exchange. This is this is great. Uh, hi, th- thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Christopher Phillips. I'm a first year at the college. Uh, my question is for Mr. Stelter. Uh, you've all spoken extensively about Fox News being a purveyor of uh, disinformation, uh, but CNN is right up there with them. They push the Russian collusion hoax. They push the Jesse Smollett hoax. They smeared Justice Kavanaugh as a rapist, and they also smeared Nick Sandman as a white supremacist. And yes, they dismissed the Hunter Biden laptop affair as pure Russian disinformation. Now, Nick Sandman, he was that young high school kid with the fake Indian. The guy was not a Native American Indian yep. that, with the MAGA hat. Remember that? That's, that's Nick Sandman, if you've forgotten. Uh, with mainstream corporate journalists becoming little more than uh, apologists and cheerleaders for the regime, is it time to finally declare that the uh, the canon of journalistic ethics is dead or no longer operative? Uh, all the mistakes of the mainstream media and CNN in particular seem to magically all go in one direction. Are we expected to believe that this is all just some sort of random coincidence or is there something else behind it? It's too bad. It's time for lunch. Uh, you have 30 and, seconds. No. Well, I think it's always time for lunch for Brian Stelter, if you've seen him. Huh? I, th- I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a clock that says 30 seconds. But, but I think my honest answer to you, and I will, I'll come over and talk in more detail after this, is that I think you're describing a different channel than the one that I watch. Yeah, because he watches Newsmax and One American <laughs> News, I think. Right? He doesn't watch CNN. Uh, but I understand that that is a popular right-wing narrative about CNN. I think it's important when we talk about shared reality and democracy, all these networks, all these outlets have to defend democracy. And when they screw up, admit it. Uh, But when Benjamin Hall, the Fox correspondent, was wounded in Ukraine, the news crews at CNN and the New York Times stopped what they were doing, and they tried to help. They tried to help him get out of the country. They tried to find the dead crew members. That's what news outlets do. That's how they actually do work together to your question about— Now, notice he has not addressed any of these slanders. Nope. 
and misinformation broadcast on CNN for years. Sharing those kinds of connections and trust. We don't talk He's about rambling. it enough, though. We don't share that reality about how that happens. And with regards to the regime, I think you mean the President Biden? The last time I spoke with a Biden aide, we yelled at each other. So that's the reality of the news business that people don't see, that people don't hear. They imagine that it's a, a situation that simply is not. But I think your question, it speaks to the failure of journalism to show our work and show the reality of how our profession operates. We have a lot of work to do, I think. Yeah, yeah, like firing you. I cannot uh, wait for the day when he gets fired. It's going to happen, well, I'm telling you. you know, Bri- I will give Brian— It's got to. I will give Brian Stelter—I'll say. I'll give him one compliment. He continues to do these panels— and he's always called out like this, and mm-hmm. he continues to do them. So he he uh, enjoys it, but and he you know well, but, like he said, that kid said he's a big cheerleader yeah. for for CNN, and that's yeah. part of that is mm-hmm. going around and being a cheerleader for them and going out to these campuses, and and he sees it as outreach. He sees it like an evangelical preaching the gospel. That's how he views it. That he's going to go and change minds. Do you hear what he said? I'll talk to you in further detail after this. So he's going to go up to this kid, ingratiate himself to him, and try to win him over. Good luck. Yeah. And, you know, this Brian Stelter, I don't even know, who is he? Where did he come from? You know, he's got this, I know we all know who he is now, but he's got this position at CNN where he's the media correspondent. So Mm -hmm. he... He doesn't just report on what other media are doing. He constantly sits in judgment of what media are doing. Yeah. And I don't know who put him in this position. I mean, I don't know how he's qualified. He did, all of a sudden, he came out of nowhere, and he's got this all-powerful platform that he's been on, just casting judgment, passing judgment on everyone else oh, in the yeah. media. I'm sure he loves it, I don't. Too. I don't get it. And he's uh, not likable. No. He certainly doesn't have a look for television. That's for sure. And he's not. He doesn't a, even have a look for radio. And he's not a. He's not a journalist. He's not a reporter. What does he ever report no. on? Really, if you think I, I about it, know. what stories does he really report on? All he reports on is how how he disapproves of somebody. His stories are disapproving of someone else mm-hmm. in the media. And yeah, then, and, and then, bashing Tucker Carlson and Fox News, and then praising CNN. Now, but this kid was right. Uh, you know, he listed all the things CNN lied about. Yeah. Um, and and how they the, the how they push these stories with Nick Sandman, yeah. the Russia collusion. He forgot to mention Stormy Daniels having Michael Avenatti. I mean, you could make a list of like a dozen mm-hmm. things that they've done in the last four or five years. That's right. All of them wrong. No credibility. They don't research anything. You know why? Because they have a narrative, and if it goes with their narrative, they're going to run with it. They don't care whether it's true or not. And then when it comes out that they were wrong or flat out lying. Do you think they come out and admit it? Rarely, rarely mm-hmm. for for a blip, like on a like yeah. on a Sunday night at ten o'clock or something. Now I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. All this great news we have about the growth of the podcast mm-hmm. here, and it is in uh, large part due to our Patreons. And thank you so much. And it, you know, if you'd like to support the show, a great way to do that is by becoming a Patreon supporter. And for those that aren't familiar with what Patreon is. When you become a Patreon supporter, you're a patron of the program. And um, there's a website, patreon.com, that allows you to become a Patreon. There's a link to our Patreon page in the description of this and every episode. Depending on what platform you listen to us on, it may or may not be clickable. So you may have to copy and paste it. It's patreon.com slash Show, And there are perks, there are benefits to becoming a Patreon supporter. One of them is... Every Patreon supporter gets a commercial free edition of each and every podcast episode. So if you'd like to support the program, go to that link, patreon.com slash real Brian Craig show and become a Patreon supporter. Our top Patreon supporters get a live on air. Thank you. Shout out on each and every episode. So the names that you will hear now are of our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary. ETW, D, Pamela, Jacqueline, Rick, Rich, and Nick. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you. And again, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, the link is in the episode description, patreon.com slash real Brian Craig show. 
If you wanted to try meditation but didn't know how or even where to begin, the book from author Peggy Lunnington, Meditation Manual, Simple Directions for a Life-Changing Practice, available on Amazon, is the help you've been seeking. This must-read book is a quick read with a very personal tone, beginning with an intimate glimpse into the author's life and reasons they needed meditation, followed by a brief description of what meditation is and does. Also included are four simple exercises that could change a person's life. Author Peggy Lonington's goal was simple, to make meditation easily accessible for everyone during this unusually stressful period in our collective history. Meditation Manual, Simple Directions for a Life-Changing Practice, debuted as an Amazon number one new release in its category. Start your meditation journey right now and order your copy of Meditation Manual, Simple Directions for a Life-Changing Practice on Amazon and the author's website, Peggy Lunnington. Dot com. Parents, grandparents, and teachers, there's a book available on Amazon that you will want to add to your child's reading list. Helping the Blind Man, Angels Among Us, from author Michaela Clark. It's so important to teach our children the importance of kindness and helping others. Books are a great way to teach them these important lessons. In Helping the Blind Man, Angels Among Us, readers will meet a kind-hearted and good-natured AJ who learns a lesson in kindness and thinking about others on his adventures to the store with his big sister Sandra. He learns that even when you want something really bad, it's better to meet someone else's need because God always meets our needs at the right time. Come along with AJ and learn more about the gift of kindness. Helping the Blind Man, Angels Among Us, from author Michaela Clark, is available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback. Order your copy right now. From author Ashley Kyradine comes a children's book your kids will love. An Earful of Secrets, available on Amazon. An Earful of Secrets is a delightful rhyming tale about an elephant who can hear everything. This elephant loves to listen in on everyone's conversation. She enjoys hearing the jungle secrets, but one day, while spying on her friends, the elephant hears something that she doesn't like. Read along and find out what happens. An Earful of Secrets is filled with captivating illustrations and a story that teaches a good lesson about gossiping. Available in Kindle and paperback on Amazon. Order your copy right now. An ear full of secrets from author Ashley Kyradine. You are listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at BrianCraigShow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. So this week we had uh, Obama at the White House, and we found out today that Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden's sister both Mm -hmm. have COVID, Mm -hmm. that Nancy Pelosi, they had some dinner, this gridiron dinner, that Nancy Pelosi actually had COVID while she was in physical contact with Joe Biden. And today, Peter Ducey from Fox News and the um, White House press conference asked Jen Psaki about this, who's, by the way, on her way out. She just took a job at MSNBC, but she's still at the White House temporarily. So this is uh, Ducey going after, well, just asking Jen Psaki about this because they're trying to tell us nothing to see here, even right. though Pelosi uh, has COVID, that uh, Biden had no contact and and all of this. And you can see it in the video with Obama how how much contact she was she had much more contact with biden than obama did who was avoiding obama was avoiding biden listen to this this is peter ducey with jen Psaki today about all that yes it will be an outside event and we'll be marking it in that way yes. go ahead thanks jen how can you guys say that president biden was not a close contact with speaker pelosi when there is video of the speaker kissing him Well, Peter, the way that it is defined is by the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, and their definition of it is 15 minutes of of contact within a set period of time uh, and within six feet. I have never heard that before. Yeah, let me rewind. You know, all this talk they've had about social distancing and contact tracing. Is there anyone in this listening audience who has heard said anywhere... Mm -mm. By any official, that close contact is defined as 15 minutes? Never. This is, let's let's play the rest of it. 
Peter, the way that it is defined is by the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, and their definition of it is 15 minutes of, of contact within a set period of time uh, and within six feet. Uh, it did not meet that bar. It does not mean that, uh, that no one will get COVID around the world who does not have a close contact. It just means we are defining for all of you uh, whether the president and their interaction met the definition of the CDC of a close contact. Half the cabinet was there on Tuesday. At okay. Least. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And so here's okay. Here's here's the thing with all this. Okay? She's the biggest gaslighter in the world. Well, this is this is a very important exchange. Mm-hmm. Okay, because she's now said contact close contact is now defined as 15 minutes. Okay. This is what George Orwell's 1984 was all about, the changing of the meaning of words. Right. And, you know, two plus two is not four. That's right? what liberals do. That's and, all they do. And, you know, George Orwell, who, of course, was a big anti-communist, and, and that's where all of that came from. Mm-hmm. They have now, what she just did with, without even hesitation, mm-hmm. is redefine what the phrase Close contact means. Depends on what your definition of is. Well, she, they is. have changed the definition of it. That's what I'm saying. That's what Clinton did. So yeah. That's what they, they do. They have changed the definition of it to 15 minutes. The, the, come on. I mean, this is. I have never heard that ever. And No one and, has. And they, they no. probably changed that definition no like, that. like an hour ago. Now, this, this is a story about Jin Psaki that just really is. I, I maybe I have not read this story. I'm going to read this. I only read the headline of this story. It's a media item about now. Jin Saki has made a deal to go to MSNBC, mm-hmm. and apparently, NBC News journalists have had a meltdown about Jin Saki coming to MSNBC. And I am in complete shock about this because MSNBC is MSDNC, right? That's what Trump calls them. I mean, they're as liberal as it gets. They're not shy about it. They're not embarrassed by it. And people that have worked for presidents for as long as I can remember, have a history of when they they leave the White House and they get a high-paying job. And I've never heard of something like this happening before. You know, there are two former White House press secretaries at Fox, Dana Perino and McEnany, Mm -hmm. right? And and this is very, this is a normal thing. But listen to this. Um, And Nicole Wallace, who worked for uh, John McCain works at MS. Yeah, it's a it's a stepping stone in their career. Yeah, so I don't understand this thing with Saki. Maybe this story will tell us. Mediaite's liberal, so maybe they'll give us some liberal perspective. Okay, this is a Mediaite right now. Some journalists at NBC News are reportedly frustrated at the prospect mm-hmm. of White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki being hired by MSNBC. According to a report from CNN's Oliver Darcy, NBC News President Noah Oppenheim got an earful from a number of irate staffers who believe that MSNBC signing Saki would taint the NBC News brand. Darcy quoted an anonymous source on the call as saying Oppenheim asserted that MSNBC and NBC News are separate entities, with the former more focused on left-leaning opinion shows. Here's what he's saying. They have, a pers- they have perspective programming on MSNBC. This was done on the perspective programming side. Boy, that sounds like propaganda too. Perspective programming. Mm -hmm. I I thought I thought it was news. No, I thought it was cable news. Now it's perspective programming. That's a new one. Yeah, and contact means fifteen minutes or longer. She'll fit in as well there as Megyn Kelly fit in at NBC. This was done on the perspective programming side, not anything that reflects on NBC News. The source told CNN's Darcy. Many NBC News personalities. Uh, from Chuck Todd, Andrea Mitchell to Haley Jackson have a major presence of both NBC News and MSNBC. The idea that the brands are completely separate from each other strains uh, credibility. In light of the report that this call between perturbed NBC News staffers and Noah Oppenheim mm. took place Friday, uh, NBC's Christian Welker grilled Saki about a reported talks with MSNBC later in the day. Christian Welker, she's the one who spent Christmas night, Christmas Eve night, she spent the Christmas Eve night with her parents mm-hmm. at the White House, woke up Christmas morning at the White House and celebrated Christmas with President Obama and the Obama girls and, the, and Michelle. So she's a hardcore. Another you know, one who bought her way in. Yeah. And she's, daddy's and, money. And, and she's NBC's White House correspondent. Uh, she uh, Listen to this. It's interesting to note that NBC's Christian Welker and this little reveal I just gave, I mean, that's pretty connected. Mm-hmm. The, the Obamas, they chose to spend Christmas with Christian Welker and her family. 
I mean, I and they had, and their girls were little girls at the time. You're going to, well, they did that to help their daughters or maybe they're just cl- that close friends. Maybe. And this is what she says when she's all hooked up like that. How is it ethical to have these conversations with media outlets while you continue to have a job standing behind that podium? Welker asked, well, is she ever dis- does she have to disclose that she spent the night with the Obama family at Christmas? There are a range of ethical and legal requirements imposed on everybody. And then it goes on and on. Um, This is very strange. I don't know why the NBC News snobs have this beef with her. I'm very curious to know what it, why, but isn't that strange, Kathy? Well, you know, I I never thought when they announced that she would, is a good fit. I just don't think she's likable. I don't think people like her. Clearly they don't. Um, I don't think it's an issue of jealousy because I don't think she's got the stuff. I really don't. She's she's not, and I agree, and I say that about Nicole Wallace too, but look where she is. To me, she's not likable on TV. Um, I don't think anybody uh, likes her or wants her there. And I don't know, maybe it's a jealousy thing, but that's not the vibe I'm getting. I just feel like they personally, they work with her daily and they personally don't like her. Or maybe because she's too connected to Biden and Obama, and maybe that's a threat to them. Like she's just way too, you know, she's very, you know, she worked for Obama. Maybe she's too connected to him and they are threatened by that. I don't know. I want to say real something's quick. Something's weird going on with that. Um, another article on media, I real quick. This is today. New York AG Letitia James files a motion to hold former President Donald Trump, I like to say President Trump, in contempt for his refusal you know, this, to okay. provide documents. Before we read that, Kathy, okay. this thing about former President Trump. Okay. Whenever we talk, like we're talking about Obama a lot this week, right? Because he was at the White House. Have any of us said former President Obama? We always say President Obama. I just say or Obama. Obama. And, but with, but with, but <laughs> I don't with, like to call him You either President. say President Obama or Obama. With Trump, they never, they never, they always got to say former. They always got to get that in. Okay, so she has filed a motion to hold President Trump in contempt for his refusal to provide documents, more documents, in compliance with a civil investigation. Letitia James submitted the court filing on Thursday today as part of her probe into Trump's business practices and possible financial fraud. Possible. In the filing, James asked the judge to fine Trump $10,000 a day until he produces the documents mm. she has accused him of withholding despite a subpoena. So it continues. Well, they she, haven't found anything on this. She guy, ran, she ran for attorney general on the promise that she would sue Trump. So she's, you know, she's fulfilling that campaign. Well, let's process, see if that goes you know, through promise. where he gets fined 10 grand a day. Now um, I want to talk about the Thomas Edison of sleep, the inventor of the, my pillow. And of course that's Mike Lindell. And you know what Mike Lindell is going up against, he now has three defamation suits against him mm-hmm. over $3 billion in defamation suits against him. Uh, th- and that's billion with a B. And and it's because why? He stands up for MAGA. He stands up for Trump. And, you know, Mike Lindell, my pillow has been kicked out of all the major retailers, right? Mm-hmm. Kohl's, Bed Bath & Beyond, the home shopping channels. You, you know the story. It, 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 and he has thousands of employees. And having thousands of employ- employees means there are tens of thousands of people mm-hmm. whose lives are supported by my pillow because those employees all have families. And Mike Lindell has not laid anyone off during all of this through COVID, through the cancel culture and everything else, getting locked out of all these retailers and the TV shopping channels and everything else. And he's he's not uh, laid anyone off and his business has stayed successful because of you out there in the listening audience. And when you go to MyPillow.com and you use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. You will receive incredible discounts on so many my pillow products, and you know I I'm going to go over some of the products. Kathy and I basically live in a my pillow household. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have we have the sheets, the pillows, the towels, the robes, the slippers. I mean, we have so much the the mattress topper, the pet beds. We we you know we we we're a we're a my pillow household. Okay, and. Uh, standing and supporting Mike Lindell is a very honorable thing to do, and. Uh, when you use our promo code Kane to check out K-A-N-E, you're not just supporting Mike Lindell and his great company and all of his efforts with Trump and MAGA. You're also supporting this podcast and all the content that I'm involved in, which includes the Brian Craig Show podcast, the Steve Kane radio show, my YouTube channel. Everything that I do, 
you and and am connected with, you are supporting when you use the promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E. And um, we we have a very good relationship with Mike Lindell and my pillow. We do. And uh, I talk to his office at least once a week. Uh, this week I talked to them twice um, about about something, and and I had some marketing ideas. <laughs> I was just talking to them about. But um, you guys out there, when you use our promo code, you are uh, doing a a a great deed in supporting Mike Lindell, his company, Trump Maga, and all the content, whatever content that I'm connected with, as I said. And Mother's Day is coming up next month. And uh, my pillow products are great for Mother's Day. You know, a um, couple years back, we got my mother a my pillow for Mother's Day, and th- that came to be. My my mother came over on Christmas Eve and stayed the night for, so she could wake up at our house on Christmas morning. And she said, "Can I um, can I try out one of those my pillows you're always talking on the radio about?" So you know, we gave her one of our uh, my pillows, and uh, she was very skeptical. She says, uh, "You know, it's my mother. You know, she." You know, you know, she says, I got to see if they're as good as you say they are. And she woke <laughs> up the next morning. I didn't even have to ask. She says, wow, those, those pillows are absolutely amazing. And mm-hmm. we got her a My Pillow for Mother's Day. And In fact, of, she said, can you get me one? Yeah, yeah, we got her one for Mother's Day. And out of all of the years of Mother's Days, and I've had a lot of them with my mother with gifts, mm-hmm. the only gift that I've ever given her for Mother's Day that I remember, that she remembers, and that she has and uses is the My Pillow. Very true. And and uh, you you get your mom a gift for Mother's Day at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout. These will be gifts that she remembers for uh, many, many years and to come. And they won't end up in the trash. That's true. Yeah, that's right. Mom doesn't want candy and, and they don't want flour. They, they right. you know, and it, you know, this is a thoughtful gift. Now, the My Pillow itself, with our promo code Kane, lowest price ever, K A N E at checkout, just nineteen ninety eight. Um, also, some, um, now again, there's many. I like the towels and yeah. the slippers. There's many. Bathrobes sp- myself. Yeah, there's many specials at MyPillow.com that you could take advantage of with, uh, of with our promo code Kane. I'm just going to mention a. Just going to mention uh, a couple others that are great for Mother's Day gifts, okay? The pillow, like we got my mom, 1998 with the promo code Kane. Kathy had mentioned the six-piece MyPillow towel set. We have these towels. They are wonderful towels. They are. The regular price for the MyPillow towels is $109.99. With our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, just $39.99. The MyPillow bathrobes, Kathy and I each have a MyPillow bathrobe. They're wonderful, spectacular robes. They are 30% off with the promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And and finally, uh, the last special I'll mention are the MyPillow My Slippers. I have the MyPillow My Slippers. They are wonderful. They're really popular. They come in many different styles and colors for mm-hmm. men and women and uh, 50% off and with the promo code Kane. And you can get these things Kane. shipped directly to your mom if you don't live that's near true. her. Mm-hmm. And if you have somebody who's a parent that's elderly – or they live in a nursing home or something. I'm telling you, these things there will make them feel so special. A nice pair of slippers with a nice bathrobe is really, I think, a wonderful thing to get your mother. Mm-hmm. I think she would yeah. really appreciate that. Now make sure you use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene, mm. oh, man, I, I love Marjorie Taylor Greene. And I'm so excited that Sarah Palin is running for the House of Representatives because she will win. She was endorsed by President Trump over the weekend. I kind of wish she was running for senator and to but to take over Murkowski, but I guess oh. there's somebody else. Uh, How yeah. great would that be? Yeah, we, well, her as a senator. Well, I, I'll tell you what's going on there. But we're going to have this new squad in the House, and it's going to be Sarah Palin. Oh yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Louisa, I know Bobert. Lauren Boebert and all that, but but the big cheeses will be Marjorie Taylor Greene and Sarah Palin. And I believe that there is a very strong possibility that the reason Sarah Palin is coming out of retirement and running for the House of Representatives, because a lot of people say, well, she was governor. That's kind of like a step back. And it is. Um, I think she's doing that. I think she is on the short list. And this is I'm not saying this has been decided, but I think she's on the short list of possibilities to be the running mate of President Trump as his vice president you in 2024. So? Yeah, I think that's why she's doing it. I think that's exactly oh. why Sarah Palin's doing it. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. She's coming out of she's retirement. She's getting back into the political. Well, she's going to spend two years of becoming very politically active, and she will have been in the House a year, which is the same time Barack Obama was in the Senate when he was, when he, you know. So uh, I think that's why she's doing it. But anyway, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, in his stand-up routine, made a comment about Marjorie Taylor Greene. And Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'll tell you when we're done here, has, has done something about it. But 
This is Jimmy Kimmel in his opening monologue the other night talking about the great Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is a female member of the United States House of Representatives, which is important to highlight with what he says. Listen to this. That are uh, in the house, like Marjorie Taylor Greene. This one, clan mom, is especially a... Clan mom, he called her. Uh, that's not why I play this. Clan mom? Yeah. I mean, get, get, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, give us an example of something she said or done Meanwhile, that's clan-like. out of him and her, he's the only one that's been in blackface. That's exactly right. So he can go screw himself. Yeah, has, has, has Marjorie Taylor Greene been in blackface and she like should, you? She should mention that. Jimmy I know, Kimmel? Yeah. So anyway, let's get back to this. In the house, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, this woman, clan mom, is especially upset <laughs> with the three Republican senators who said they'll vote yes on Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson, who's nominated for the Supreme Court. She tweeted, Murkowski, Collins, and Romney are pro-pedophile. They just voted for KBJ. Wow, where is Will Smith when you really need him, huh? Okay, now, of course, what that joke means is he, he's suggesting, where's Will Smith to mm-hmm. slap sitting member of the United States House of Representatives, Marjorie Taylor Greene. So he is advocating for a f- physical attack mm-hmm. on Marjorie Taylor Greene. Marjorie Taylor Greene has reported him to the Capitol Police. Good for her. And, you know, when a member of Congress is threatened, whoever they are, like this, it is not unusual for them to report it to the Capitol Police. She did it. And uh, this may not get a lot of publicity. And and they're pretty creepy guys the capitol we saw yeah them, i mean you know, I, you know i don't put that, much but, faith in them but for they sure. are, oh, you think marjorie taylor green's gonna let no, this go no they are obligated to follow up on this because she feels threatened and she's a member of the house of representatives and th- you know this is something greg kelly has talked about um on newsmax tv more than once i've heard him talk about this he says how can these guys when you uh, protect these people they hate so much the yeah. republicans in yeah, the that's house a good point and this is going to be a test of that. And um, Jimmy Kimmel, shame on you. And uh, well, he's um, he's just a scummy guy. I mean, I'm sorry. Nobody, you should make a, a, a comment about violence against anyone, especially a woman, but a member of the House of Representatives, especially after the Capitol breach. That's I just mean, terrible. This guy has been in blackface. He, he said things and did things on the Man Show that are so like anti woman mm-hmm. and. And degrading and everything. He's got a hell of a lot of nerve. He sure does. He sure does. Well, listen, we are all out of time. My name is Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and we will talk to you next time. Graduation season is right around the corner. For custom graduation announcements for your students, visit digitalbell.etsy.com. Digitalbell.etsy.com offer customizable wedding invitations and thank you cards too, all created by a professional designer. Everything at digitalbell.etsy.com are created in high quality graphics that you can edit and print. These are memorable keepsake invites and cards that you will keep forever and are perfect for your scrapbook. Go right now to digitalbell.etsy.com. Etsy.com and your special occasion will be one to be remembered forever. Digitalbell.etsy.com